Now we have a few coronaphobia texture report uh, stories here. Hector County SWAT team raids bar for protesting to reopen from everythinglubbock.com. And I love this. This is, this, and, and I mean, I, I hate the situation, don't get me wrong, but I love the spirit of defiance that we are seeing here and how clearly it is being communicated by business owners. The possibility of losing my license, heartbreaking, but they've already taken my income. Think about this. In order to run a brick and mortar business, like here, we, we, we do big igloo geodesics here at the Garden of Freedom. We run underground or under the table, off the record businesses. We don't have to have a retail point where we are subject to licensing or, or taxes. We're able to get to, to avoid most of that. You can't do that with a bar or a restaurant. I guess you could. There, In fact, you know, there are some. I've been to a few. Very rare. Very hard to pull off. Uh, but yeah, to, to run a bar on private property. Uh, or a, uh, and, and I mean, like properly asserted private property or a restaurant, things like that. Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. You do get shut down. This is where zoning comes in as the government's wing of the, you know, economic control enforcement here. And they give you a license. Imagine that they give you a license. You get government permission to serve alcohol or to serve food on your private property in your private establishment, taking money in private exchange from individuals. You have to have a license or they will come and shut you down. This is the mechanism of control. But what happens when your license ain't good for shit and you are going to starve, lose your business? Or, okay, nobody starves in America. I get that. And I'm not going to play that fear-mongering game. Nobody starves in America today. Congratulations. We made it. That's a beautiful thing to celebrate. But no, that you could, you're, well, why? You threaten, you threaten a bar owner with losing his license when he can't open anyway. Who cares? Really, it it doesn't matter. Why why would you care about this? So, um, I, there's another story here uh, uh, from Texas, no less. This is from DallasNews.com. Salon order. Uh, excuse me. I think I lost the link here. All right. From DallasNews.com, Dallas salon owner jailed for reopening in violation of court order. Shelly Luther defied local and state orders and a judge's restraining order in operating her business during the coronavirus pandemic. What a bad bitch. God damn. Uh, look at this. Look at this. Pull this woman's picture. I, I want people to know Shelly Luther's face from her beautiful booking photo. Not just from that one with the mask, CJ. Scroll down. Look at look at the look at this woman's face. That that is a bad bitch right there. That is a woman fired up in defiance of some bullshit of people trying to take away her livelihood. A Dallas salon owner will spend a week in jail after she was found in contempt of court Tuesday for violating an order to close her salon during the coronavirus pandemic. In addition, Shelly Luther was fined $7,000 for continuing to operate her business, Salon a la mode, in violation of a judge's temporary restraining order issued against the business. She was taken into custody immediately after the hearing, booked into Dallas County Jail just after 4.30. Like other businesses deemed non-essential, Luther's far north Dallas Salon was forced to close March 22 after the county enacted its stay at home order. She reopened April 24 despite that order and tore up a cease and desist letter from County Judge Clay Jenkins at a demonstration the next day. Temporary restraining order signed April 28 by District Judge Eric Moyer, but Luther continued to operate the business. I hope this sets up a constitutional challenge to all this nonsense and she wins. But she's already won. She has already won because she has stood up for what is right. As she said, quote, I couldn't feed my family and my stylists couldn't feed their families. Luther testified, holding a phone to her face from the witness stand so the court reporter could hear her through a mask. Before issuing his ruling, Moye gave Luther an opportunity to apologize and promise not to reopen her salon 
until she was allowed to do so, saying he would consider levying only a fine in lieu of the incarceration, which you've demonstrated that you have so clearly earned. Oh, all she had to do was apologize and promise not to reopen? Did she have to kiss the ring and suck his dick too? Jesus Christ. The arrogance of this judge, the arrogance of these governors, the arrogance of every government official playing into this fear-mongering nonsense to increase their power and violate individual rights. As she said, quote, feeding my kids is not selfish. If you think the law is more important than kids getting fed, then please go ahead with your decision. But I am not going to shut the salon. Minutes earlier, Governor Greg Abbott had announced during a news conference that barber shops and salons across Texas could reopen Friday. Really? Really? The nonsense absolute nonsense this is i mean this is like this is this is kind of painful to 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 see this but to see people standing up so beautiful and and back to everything lubbock.com for a second across town was another gathering an owner of anytime fitness on 8th street clint gillespie said he was issued a citation for keeping his business open and look at this I love this. This was the hardest part of the shutdown for me. I'm a huge fan of Anytime Fitness. I love my gyms and this chain, by the way. And now I am all the more encouraged to say without any sponsorship or compensation, go get a membership at Anytime Fitness as soon as anyone in your area is opening. Very reasonable. $30 a month in most places, less than some. And this is a nationwide chain of franchises. And it's because they're franchises that this individual guy, this individual owner, Clint Gillespie, Gillespie, was able to open his in defiance. As he said, if they cite me, it's one thing because I'm the owner, I'm responsible for the business. But to assume that they are going to come in and start issuing citations for anybody that's here to me, that's a separate violation of their First Amendment rights. I feel like they're just doing that to intimidate and harass. While he complied at first, He says he could not risk losing his business for good. He said Monday's gathering is not a revolution, but a response to what he believes is unconstitutional. Best case scenario is we're allowed to open, we're allowed to survive. Yeah. Now, there was another headline we're not going to get to today. Temporary layoffs start to become permanent. Not if Americans follow the lead of these three brave business owners. Not if we stand up for what we know to be right. Not if we all engage in the required civil disobedience. Say, we're not going to take this anymore. This is such a beautiful time to be alive. To see such defiance flowering in places you would have never expected. In Texas, the great free Republic of Texas, where some of these lockdown and shutdown policies have been more draconian than anywhere else. We will not allow these layoffs to become permanent across the board. Life finds a way and so do Americans. 